So before we start the session, I'd like everybody to um, mute your uh, system and uh, switch on your camera so that we can see each other for some time. So very good morning to everybody and welcome you all to the sixth webinar of Plant Breeding webinar series, which is being organized by Foundation for Advanced Training in Plant Breeding on a monthly basis. So today we have Dr. Ganeshan Srinivasan, who will talk about integrated management strategies for plant genetic resources in agri horticulture ecosystem in an Indian uh, prospect. So the purpose of these webinars are to sensitize people to know and value the importance of plant breeding and also to create an awareness on various aspects like technology integration, policy support, regulatory overview, farmers comprehensions and various other aspects require for inclusive development of agriculture in order to achieve food security. Foundation for Advanced Training in Plant Breeding, abbreviated as ATPBR, is a non-profit organization which aims to promote advanced technology in plant breeding and develop qualified plant breeders who would complement and add value to the existing system. Our efforts are towards creating a conducive ecosystem where skillful organization or resourceful people work together to develop joint forces, research, and co-incubations. ADPBR organized professional training, workshop, and various awareness sessions to build required competencies of the global standard. And we also organized annual conference named Fiber Farming Conference in different locations across India. ADPBR aspired to bring the gap between university and industry by developing job-ready human resources to feed the market requirement and encourage potential entrepreneurs to succeed in their journey. Now, I would like to take the privilege to introduce our moderator, Dr. Suren Tikku, who is the co-founder and director of research at Tierra Seed Science Private Limited. He's also an independent director at ADPBR. He has been working for past 53 years as a successful vegetable breeder, teacher, researcher, and development manager, both in public and private sector. He worked with companies like Adventa, Syngenta, Coinier, and ICR for many years and developed several nationally and internationally released varieties and hybrids in tomatoes and okra. He has, been, he has published several research papers in peer-reviewed journal and also supervised MSc and PhD student. So I request Tiku sir to take the floor. Tiku sir, over to you. Thanks, Aparna. Thanks for that introduction. It became long. But uh, good morning to you all and welcome to this sixth uh, uh, lecture of our series. And uh, it's my proud privilege to introduce to you to the speaker of the day, Dr. S. Ganeshan, who also is a old friend because we also come from, I also come from the same ICR stream. He uh, was principal scientist and head plant genetic resources at IHR at the time of his retirement. He is an ARS scientist from 1978 stream and uh, 35 years of research and research management experience. He was a visiting scientist under FAO UNDP project on tropical and subtropical fruits to UC Davis and National Center for Genetic Resource Preservation, Fort Collins in USA. He has also been on a deputation to as director, Jawaharlal Nehru Training uh, Tropical Botanical uh, Genetic Resource Institute in Trivandrum for three years, to 2005 to 2008, nearly four years. And he created a lot of uh, you know good science during his uh, uh, reign. Uh, I will just name a few. He has lots and lots of uh, good science that he has created. Created in vitro conservation facility at IHR, active gene bank that got grape for grapes, fruits, and medicinal plants. And uh, for I think he has got a Limca book of records for having uh, created that. And he has also developed. Pollen cryopreservation technology for horticultural crops that led to the establishment of a cryobank for fruit, vegetable, ornamental, and medicinal plants at IHR. And I must say here that commercially, 
that cryopreservation of Poland today is used by the seed companies. I think uh, in 1990, 92, I uh, got in touch with them and I joined Pioneer. And I think that has now become a technology that a lot of seed companies are using. I mean, seed production companies are using where the male plant is now secure in a secure one place and they freeze the pollen and then the pollen is distributed to the various female uh, plots and that way one parent is totally secure so it's a uh, very good technology and i must congratulate him for having done that work long long back and it has has commercial you know appli application he has uh, also 85 uh, research papers in journals of repute has served as consultant in Malaysia and resource person for India for the International Plant Genetic Resource Institute of Rome, where he was also a visiting scientist. He has chaired a session in Third World Botanical Congress in 19, 2007, has been associated in various advisory bodies at national and state levels on germplasm and cryopreservation, and has been honorary editor for several scientific journals like Biodiversity, Paleontology, and Current Science, etc. I think there's a lot and I think that sums up Dr. Ganeshan and I now uh, give the floor to Dr. Ganeshan to let us hear him. Thank you. Oh, you are so on you mute. Have you are on mute. Unmute Ganeshan. Yeah. Ah, yes. Good morning, everybody. Are you able to listen to me? Good morning. Yeah, so we can hear you. Yes, we can hear you. Yeah, we can hear you. Very good. Suprabhat for you. A very lovely morning in Bangalore. Rain drizzled rather in the morning. It's uh, climate is very salubrious. And those who are from Bangalore may be really enjoying it. And uh, I, at the outset, would like to thank the organization ATPBR for inviting me to provide a talk on my experiences, rather my travels, I would say, on genetic resource management. Now, without wasting much time, let me just go over to my presentation. In case you are not able to see me on the screen, please let me know, uh, because I keep moving while I'm presenting. At the same time, I wish to be around and uh, ensure that I show my face so that, you know, we are, uh, yeah. Yes, we can see the presentation. Yes, we can see your presentation as well as you both. Put, Thank put you. Slide show. Yeah, yeah, I'm doing that. Yeah. Okay. We're Perfect. Fine. Perfect. Okay. Thank you. So here we go. So the talk of today is based on management strategies. How best you can integrate them for genetic resource in agri horticultural ecosystems where I would say that, you know, right from 1977, I bring to the uh, knowledge of many of you that our founder director, Dr. G.S. Randhawa, initiated me into the work on genetic resources conservation. From then on, I have been fortunate enough to work for almost three and a half decades to four decades in the area of genetic resource conservation and management. So, Genetic resources, what are its origin, diversity and use? Genetic resource, in our breeding parlance, the meaning is entirely different. When you talk of genetic resource to a, another person, collection of plants are synonymously thought of as collection of genetic resources. And this misnomer is always being carried out, even in one of the international programs where many people were telling that I have added 10 accessions and 20 accessions to my genetic resource material. I said, absolutely wrong because genetic resource is something different from whatever collections you already have in your kitty. So when you talk of uh, the country's rich species biodiversity, it is one of the 12 mega centers across the world and is blessed with two mega centers of biodiversity. One is the Hindustan center, the other one is the Central Asia center of origin. Now, we all know the Babylon's theory of center of origin and center of diversity, which we studied in our plant breeding class. The biodiversity is mainly distributed in the Western Ghat, 
northeastern india central himalayas and from where the indigenous plant genetic resources are sourced what i mean is your the origin of your genetic resources come from the biodiversity and many species originating from the tropics of tropics and temperate have rich agri horticultural value when i say agri horticultural value i just keep set aside the agriculture component of it i speak more uh, in favor of horticulture uh, because i have a bias having worked for there for nearly four decades the vast degree of diversity present in the hindustan region is definitely and directly related to the high divergent ecosystem and altitude varying variations so the indian scenario continuing about it we are very floristically rich we have about 141 endemic genera out of 5150 species this may be a bit uh, uh, early data i think this was collected around uh, the mid of 2015 of 16 14 of 15 compared to china china is almost having one third of their plant collections endemic in their biodiversity one third is a very big number and here they belong to 47 families of higher plants among the endemic species we have 2532 species that are distributed in the himalaya there is a temperate material 1788 species in the peninsular region very very rich in diversity then 185 species in the andaman and nicobar In fact, we have replicated in the Jawaharlal Nehru Center of Tropical Botanical Garden 120 excellent species from uh, Andaman and Nicobar, and we have an Andaman uh, uh, block in uh, Trivandrum. If any of you are likely to go there, you can visit it. There are about 43,000 plant species that are said to exist in India. Maybe now it may be less likely more because there was a revision of the Red Data Book. Of which seven thousand five hundred plant species are referred to the Indian folklore. That is the medicinal plants which have high values, which we do not know. Somebody else from uh, another country would come and identify its properties and take it over, and then make the final product and sell it back to us with a higher price. So this is the problem with many of folklore medication, which we are not in a position to. identify its genetic resource or the traits that are present in it about 1700 plant species are actually documented in the ancient literature i'm talking about a literature which are on the leaves we did have a project in trivandrum where there was a program to translate information from the leaf uh, document into to digitizing of the entire entire information present in the leaf documents so these kind of activities would certainly enhance our number of uh, species that are present and uh, where exactly they are present needs to be checked out i mean you know we 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 have to make a clear cut demarcation as to where we stop and where we start the agro part of it so genetic resources derived from these group plants calls for an efficient management and economic use given the emphasis during the preceding decade as designated as un decade of biodiversity we all know 1020 was the decade of biodiversity so agro biodiversity derived genetic resources we talk about that in india it is highly distributed in eight very diverse phytogeographical and 15 agro ecological regions the range of distribution of these plants varies from these are the four areas which are listed evergreen forests to the western ghats then deserts in rajasthan to mangroves in the east From the vast deciduous forests of Deccan, Deccan Plateau to the Sholas, higher Sholas near the area that is the foothills of Western Ghats, from the swamps of Ganges, that is the mangroves, to the moss-laden tree trunks of the Silent Valley. So, agricultural cultivation practice, as you know, even before we thought of genetic resource, before we even conceived the idea of geoplasm, have evolved from time immemorial. using agro biodiversity source from these regions so horticultural crops in india when we talk of them we have a high high value and low volume and uh, many of them are indigenous say about 70% which calls for uh, reexamination of our uh, country's biodiversity then exotic is to the extent of 30% then cultivated in all agro ecosystems we all know that horticulture is present everywhere distributed in all plant forms of habit then we that is herbs shrubs and trees perennials and all kinds of habitat is present 
They require diverse management needs, as we all see it, because it is distributed in all kinds of, uh, all forms of habitat, it requires diverse management needs. Emphasis mostly on field gene bank and clonal repositories. This is the major focus which normally plant genetic resource in horticulture is given. So the distribution of crops in the agroecosystems, I'm just listing out what has been done in the NARS. Maybe this list is not exhaustive. So, or maybe exhaustive, different uh, fruits and vegetables and a number of crops which we are right now dealing in these different categories. And what is the distribution? Tropical, subtropical, temperate, arid, semi-arid. And sometimes, you know, new species are discovered by the Botanical Survey of India, which is in the form of a vegetable and that can be also identified in one of these agroecosystems. Then what is the crux of management here? Focusing on the management part of it. We have to identify genetic resources of relevance to Indian agriculture and horticulture. It's not that you can separate these two here, but something will be useful in agriculture, something will be useful in horticulture. These come from wild species, wild, very well known wild species in field crops have revolutionized agriculture. Similarly, genotypes, individual genotypes, like I, I remember that uh, particular one in uh, that uh, kiwi fruit which has come from China and that has completely revolutionized the uh, you know, cultivation of that uh, particular uh, fruit. Then extant crop varieties. We all have many of the varieties which we have not been kind of documenting but still present, which were more than 50, 60 years old, maintained by farmers over generations, over families. So knowledge of genetics and principles of plant breeding, though not uh, was aware with the farmer, is now essential to classify the plant genetic resources and maybe perhaps make it in a more inclusive manner. Take all stakeholders into account. So the types of germplasm which we have categorized are these 12 uh, uh, germplasm we have identified from the breeder's perspective. And to this, someone has to tell whether we should add the GMOs. There was a lot of debate on that, whether it should go in this category as germplasm category which are not being right now used in cultivation, but do they get a status of germplasm or genetic resource to be categorized under this kind of a setup. So just giving you an idea as to how much of germplasm has been registered in these crops. Maybe a bit old, but then I don't think there will be any enhancement in this list unless Dr. Bansal in his talk would have made the latest presentation about what is the current status. Now, let us deal with the components of genetic resource management in a cascading activity format. That is, initially we take up a survey, exploration, introduction, domestication, regeneration, characterization, evaluation, conservation, documentation and distribution. But this, this somehow sums up all the activities in genetic resource management. So let me first take a survey, whatever little bit of experience which we try to do at our institute, we use this mapping software, RSGIS software, and there was a document, I mean a, a compilation made by Dr. Ganeshaya and his group called as Jiva Sampada. We use their software and we try to map some of the species in the Western Ghats in one of our projects where we had a uh, to identify species of horticultural importance. So we were able to do it for this many number of species. I hope we are able to read them. They are a bit smaller because I took a screenshot of the screen, uh, TV screen and computer screen. And uh, more details can be provided under each folder. If you can see the details, I'll just take you to one particular folder. In this, we have done some sort of a distribution uh, in the Western Ghats in two states, Karnataka and Maharashtra, where the distribution map is showing those grids. We use the grid uh, format for uh, locating the species. And you can see the map here with different intensities where the diversity is directly correlated to the colors that are being shown here. And uh, some of these things, which are the states that are covered, distribution data in so many places that are covered. This is for Garcinia Indica. And we have given in the flyer, the picture, the entire uh, taxonomic details and distribution in different locations. And we also have the lat long information 
is, it is not present in this flyer, but they can always go and straight away to that location plus or minus some 10, 20 meters, but and try to locate this particular species for collection. So this has been a very successful program which we were able to do for at least more than 15, 20 uh, species of horticultural importance. Now, when we talk of survey and exploration, we also have to think of the gaps and missing links. Strong collaboration between various institutes of working in horticultural crops with the national centers, that is the Plant and Genetic Resources Institute, National Bureau for exploration of horticultural crops. Intensive explorations are needed, similar preceded by surveys covering all horticultural crops, especially where collections are less. We all know that, you know, in all uh, crops, we do not have adequate germplasm collection to represent the entire genetic diversity. So that is the main reason we say natural exploration plan should focus on all crops. Crop breeders in horticulture feel that their exploration needs are not prioritized, are not to be prioritized. Whenever this particular discussion comes, I have been attending in meetings in NPPDA, field crops always take a preponderance over horticultural crops, although today we have surpassed the yield levels of field crops. The timing of exploration is often very general and not specific. And proper record keeping of exploration missions, we have been doing this right from the National Agricultural Technology Project period. Documented information has been supplied to NBPGR and we have been giving enough inputs to in horticulture to NBPGR as a center working on this genetic resources. So when you go again, explore and collect the trade specific germplasm and wild species relatives of horticulture crops. Now again, how do you go and do this? Trade specific germplasm. That should have a very good breeder's eye. In those days, breeders used to go in the field and spend hours together to identify a trait, maybe visit and revisit several times. I don't know any scientist today has that much time, but this is uh, inevitable for a breeder to look for the trait specific germplasm, at least the phenotypically recognizable traits can be thought of. Then germplasm collections having high nutraceutical value. Now, this is another area which we are not, we have been lagging behind, especially leafy vegetables. I know very well, in front of my house, one lady comes and sells leafy vegetables and, you know, wrapped in a very shabby way and not very, you know, presentable. But in our country, we keep our chappals and shoes in air-conditioned rooms. But these leafy vegetables which provide the nutraceutical value are thoroughly being neglected. So the group has to really take lead and do this one in order to strengthen our uh, country's you know, health overall. So georeferencing hotspots using uh, remote sensing and GIS, geographical information system tools before taking up exploration mission. This is very, very important. Without your reference data, you're only going for a pleasure trip. So this also has been many a times reiterated in meetings and uh, many of them don't want to invest on this kind of an activity. Anywhere there is an exploration program going on in the Northeast, how many would like to join? So everybody go collect whatever is available and bring it and say that I made some collection, but you have only collected the plants, but what is the diversity that you have collected? Nobody knows. Plant crop specific surveys in centers of genetic diversity, cutting across political regions. This is a very important aspect, especially with Biodiversity International being present, showing its presence in India and also in Bangalore. Institutions will have to take up coordination activities, cut across the national boundaries, have some sort of an arrangement like agreements and uh, things to facilitate scientists, breeders to go and look for the material there. Then planned exploration missions uh, in consultation with crop-based institutes is very important. Repeat introductions, like you know many a times we have seen a lot of material brought in repeated, but there is no way to really check. Maybe a molecular method only can be brought in place to do this. Multiple exploration missions for collecting material at different growth stages, especially in case of perennials. Exploration and collection missions from outside India, which I already spoke about. Then distribution status, exploration and collection. When I showed distribution status in the form of maps, where do you see 
uh, and how many years back it has been seen. This is a continuous activity in collection of native land races, land races and geographical indicating status and farmers varieties in articles of crop not fully systematized. There is a need to shift from genotype based exploration and collection to diversity based collection. Strategy for minor fruits and driver vegetables, spices to capture diversity for nutritional needs have already discussed. Planned exploration to collect native diversity of indigenous ornamental. This is a very, very important area. Today, our ornamental industry is flooded with exotics. We have very good ornamentals, indigenous ornamentals, which we have never been thinking of bringing it to the fore for cultivation. Then there should be a gap analysis for exploration and collection of wild species based on taxonomic identities. This is a very important thing. We have been neglecting taxonomy. I remember Dr. Mohan Ram telling, who will take taxonomy? It is tax on me, he used to say. So, coming to the introduction part, like, you know, in many of the perennials, fruit tree species, plants which are introduced into a particular ecosystem, brought from the forest ecosystem, do not survive, or survive only to the extent of uh, the vegetative growth. But many, many a time we do uh, focused uh, uh, introductions for the sake of breeding work, one such work which uh, Dr. Dinesh at IHR, uh, who works on Mangora, who just retired a few a couple of months back, he was struggling to bring in uh, Camptosperma from the Andamans and plant it in IHR, in the Esargata region. Unfortunately, several times these attempts were made over one, one to one and a half decades, but it didn't work. But then what thought came into his mind? Uh, grafted Mangifera indica plant with Mangiforma, uh, Mangifera camptosperma scion. We brought the, in one of our explorations to Andaman, we collected the scion material of uh, uh, camptosperma and uh, grafted it on indica. Very clearly you can see the fruit shape and size which represents camptosperma. So the grafted material has been successfully introduced and we are able to you know, maintain this in our field gene bank at Esargata. So this is one of the success stories. Uh, similar things can be replicated for other uh, perennials where there is a problem of introduction in the form of plants. And this is another one which I thought I should show you. This is this Bakuria cuprarensis or called as Katafar, a very well known plant in the southwestern Ghats. And uh, many of them are being used by the tribals. Tribals use it for its high oxidant, uh, antioxidant uh, value, uh, vitamin C value, flavonoids, and so many attributes are there for this. But it bears copious fruits in the trees. And you know, at the time of uh, fruiting, it's a sight to see. And uh, this one, we successfully were able to introduce into the Indian Institute of Horticulture ecosystem. But I tell you, I have failed to induce flowering and it grew for four years, but it never induced flowering. We were able to multiply enough number of plants. Don't know what happened after I left, but a lot of material was generated. And you know, again, priority, priority kills this kind of activity. The priority is for those crops which have immediate requirement to be multiplied. The land, pro providing the land for multiplying this or growing this individually, we may require at least half an acre to one acre, but production availability of this for putting this, transplanting these plants was not made available and we couldn't plant it. But wherever we were able to successfully do it, we did it for this governor's plum, Flacotia Montana, and a field in bank was established and it is now still standing there in the institute if you are able to go there and see. Then we were able to see the dioecious flowering in Flacotia and uh, dimorphism also in the form of thorny and thornless, thornless trunk. These are some of the traits which you can visually observe phenotypically. And this is what when I say that when you go for exploration, you have to look for these kind of traits and then maybe initially you may feel this may or may not be useful to us. But you do not know how many other valuable traits these phenotypical traits are linked. That has to be understood. So introduction, the gaps, missing links, most introduced are received late. Our introductions, it goes through all the channels, you know, bureaucratic channels and 
uh, government of India wrote quarantine. And sometimes it is even beyond the timelines of a building program. So there, there is a need for a curator like you have a curator in the field crops. Breeders often feel that there is a delay in receipt of the material from NBPGR to the breeder. And when it comes to him, the breeding time is over and someone has to maintain it. There again, the problem is perennials have a problem. It requires proper curation. Then we are introducing the germplasm through exchange. The strategy for exchange policy issues are not put in place. There are a lot of problems when you talk of exchange when many of them are not even willing to exchange. There is a lack of proper acknowledgement of PGR introduced and used by breeders for developing cultivars because they know, they take it for granted that you know where it is a plant genetic resource from there to the release of the variety. Everybody sees the retailed variety, but what has gone into, what genetic resource has gone into it to make that variety, there is a very less uh, acknowledgement provided. The introduction of genetic resources is not happening due to IPR issues. Recently, this has been a problem. I remember very well in the 80s, we used to get material, at least for no efforts made. No efforts are made to strengthen the ties in the donor nations. This I have been trying with uh, biodiversity uh, during uh, Dr. N. K. Krishna Kumar's period to have some tie-ups with uh, countries like Iran, Iraq, and we were able to get successfully maintain pomegranate collections from uh, UC Davis, from where one Dr. Aradhya was kind enough to spare the material for our pomegranate work. There were a good number of accessions from UC Davis. Of course, these are secondary collections, not from the primary source. Then trade specific germplasm, source sets and wild species are not imported or introduced to the desired extent. This is not happening. Here is where I see the role of uh, uh, private seed companies which are distributed across the world where they can come up with some sort of a network program and dovetail it with the country's requirement. No proper care during import of particular crops in certain countries leading to infected material. Yes, this has happened with my grape material which I tried to introduce from Germany. We were we got about 20 to 30 accessions as uh, cuttings but when we finally we were able to take it to field, I got only 14 or 15 of them surviving. And there is no attempt made to introduce new morphotypes of ornamental genetic resources for commercialization and competition with exotics currently ruling the market. Here again, when we say introduce new morphotypes, these are some of the material which have been become extant where there is no IPR issue. Such material can be introduced without much problem, but this is not happening. The lack of intense efforts to collect and introduce material from secondary sources, which I have already told you. Then coming to evaluation and characterization, there is a shift. There is a shift to total morphological end-to-end -end characterization. This is, this is very important, which is not happening. And now what is presently being done is breeding objective-based evaluation characterization. The breeder has, say, n number of germplasm. He looks for only evaluating and characterizing those traits which he wants to correct to fulfill his reading objective. This molecular genomic characterization, species specific traits, marker trait associations and diversity analysis has to be taken up. Pre-breeding to form core and mini core sets. These are available in very, very few horticultural crops, but not being pursued actively in most crops. So what are the priority areas? Evaluate for biotic, abiotic and quality seeds to be, quality needs to be carried out for minor and temperate food crops. When we say minor, somebody has put it as minor because there are already a dozen major food crops which for which we have been prioritizing our work. Sugar, vitaceous vegetables, medicinal and aromatic plants, these are all being relegated to low priority areas. Mini core available for a few major and temperate food crops and also a few vegetables like in uh, Dr. Keller in Gartersleben had a mini core and mini core for onion and garlic because now he has retired. He was one of the persons who took my technology for pollen and he has established a pollen bank for uh, alliums and this needs to be thought of where core and mini core sets can, can be made available in exchange with whatever we have developed. The need to be carried out with vegetables, medicinal aromatic plants we have mentioned about 
free breeding activity which is seldom carried out for fruit medicinal and aromatic plants sorry to tell this the breeder in fruit medicinal all these crops just grow a and b and collect pollen from a and cross it with b and maybe he has a set of first of all he has a very narrow genetic base to operate so from that he doesn't know what characters are going to come through into the uh, desired uh, variety which is developing and this is something like uh, hitting a pot shot so this has to be a uh, kind of streamlined to the extent possible whether he is likely to generate in which generation the concerned desired uh, genotype which he is looking for in major tropical fruits also low emphasis on genomic and trait specific molecular characterization to develop core sets well yes we did have a project in mango uh, teamed up with an australian uh, group and uh, this work i don't know at that time this was being carried out ira is one of the partners how much uh, it has yielded the results only uh, someone can google it out and check it out and uh, only you know when after we make several times we tell them this kind of activities have been funded in horticulture in temperate crops minor tropical and subtropical fruit characterization value should be required priority in all these crops there is less priority in vegetables gourds and melons characterization and evaluation pre breeding requires prior spices except ginger and turmeric there has been some activity to develop core sets by isr and we have to use all the tools to prioritize these activities in these crops so performance in different eco agro ecosystem this is being done by the aicrps at various centers i happened to attend one or two meetings of there then they also have taken up some morpho and chemo molecular characterization work for specified material promising material i would say because it is a cost intensive technology so, so from pgr to product is another aspect which i would like to uh, just give me a moment a meeting i am in a meeting i talk to you later so development of trade specific pgrs for value addition this is something which we need to think of and i was talking about pgr to product here anana muricata we don't know anything about its genetics we don't know much how much of it is being bred across in the country but we know very well that you know this uh, milk from anana muricata is used for uh, you know some carcinoma so to cure some kinds of carcinoma this even some doctors have agreed accepted it but right now what is happening is this being sourced from the wild and directly product is made and uh, this what is being done by many of the ngos we need to kind of streamline it and give the support to the tribals who are providing this material without of course destroying the uh, diversity of it so the gaps that are there are put up so many kinds of information i think i'm running short of time because i have only 5 minutes i if there is a possibility of extending by 5 10 minutes i can cover total evaluation characterization is seldom attempted no attempts to characterize the nematodes plasm lack of participatory programs and there is no protection for characterized pga this is something which is very important we need to protect give a value tag to characterized pga otherwise it becomes a problem for us tomorrow somebody else would be taking the material for utilization then there were, again i have listed out several such uh, missing links and evaluation uh, in character evaluation so these may be looked into in many a times we are facing many of these issues in horticultural crops there is no Please effort carry on don't, don't stop you can carry on for a few more minutes extra no problem okay in conservation part now i'm coming to the conservation part of course this is an area which many of you are familiar and what is being happening in india with regard to conservation and these are the different formats that are present for conservation and at what level we think of conserving x c2 that is genotype organ and gene level then we have these approaches for different gene pool components 
then we have, unlike in field crops, we think only of seed. In horticulture, we have to think of seed, in vitro, pollen, all the categories have to be thought of, including field gene banks. And this I have tried to put it to show the diversity of conservation methods. Now, this is the field gene bank which we established for RET species. RET stands for Rare, Endangered and Threatened Species. We had a project with the one National Medicinal Plant Board, wherein 10 centers were asked to choose uh, 3 to 10 species. And the objective is to see to it that these are removed from the, the red letter data box. So that you increase the numbers and then exchange. So each center in the end of the project will have at least uh, 100 species with them. And this was something which we have done very successfully. And I thank Dr. H. B. Singh for having given support for this program when he was chairman of the National Medicinal Plant Board. And this is some of the law, just to give you a picture of uh, a gene bank in, uh, uh, across in a typical gene bank and how things are being stored. Of course, these are very well known. Then we have this in vitro conservation centers where we have uh, uh, been able to maintain material in slow growth, in uh, slow multiplication and using minimal medium and using some osmoticum and things like that and managing to retain its growth in the tube for several years. This is primarily a backup for field gene bank, thought of as a backup for field gene bank. Whenever there is a plant dying in the field, we need to think of replacing this is successfully done for cassava and banana also. And of course, we talk of cryopreservation as a holistic thing, of course, I had done a lot of work on Poland. And uh, we really understand the problems when it comes to vegetatively propagated species. Successfully, it has been done for uh, uh, hoa, coconut and coffee, for recalcitrant seed, for roots and tubers, for vegetatively propagated ornamental fruit tree, for medicinal plants, for alcohol producing cell lines. We can maintain cell lines indefinitely. Then transform tissues, genetically transformed tissues, transformation, mutagenesis, competent tissues. Then removal of viruses is very successful uh, in banana and plum. When you uh, store the apical merism, then conservation of plant pathogens is another area coming up. And we have a National Institute of Agriculture, important microorganisms. I think it has been shifted from our engine to, I think, some other place but NDPG are still giving a wall to them. So some outreach activity regarding the cryopreservation in which we participated and we were able to successfully train a good number of people in Southeast Asian countries. Then we have this uh, picture of what is existing. I mean, this is a bit old picture because the National Sea Storage Laboratory has been renamed. And uh, what we have been doing at IHR also, I'm just trying to show you. So just to give you an idea, we were also involved in uh, getting this uh, in the Limca Book of Record. And we started our Poland Cryo Bank in 83. So there's a DNA bank, which I could capture a picture of it in Korea. So it is something which just is coming up, but how far it has been successful in uh, mainstreaming activity of genetic resources, I'm a little bit uh, uh, short of knowledge. So lack of adequate institutional policy. This is something which we should keep in mind. Operational management that are fair to all stakeholders, decisions on management of genetic resources made in isolation, not as an integral part or a component of a national plan which is to be mainstreamed with. Then we have what is what I mean by stakeholder is interest holder analysis to be done to identify pressure on resources, land use disputes. Who will be affected by PBR activities? What are their interests? Who have the right to participate? How stakeholders can participate in different PGR activities. It calls for inventory of different stakeholders. And I have listed the stakeholders. Some of these people may be irrelevant when you straight away come to the look of it. Okay, so this is how I classify them. Then thinking of priorities for stakeholders, prior stakeholders look up for economic, religious, traditional, spiritual, and aesthetic, and priorities may vary for PGR land. And their interests are also entirely diverse. So if you go and tell a, a, a person in Kerala to keep up a jackfruit tree and a mango tree and tell him that this mango tree is useful for me, for my genetic resource, he will see the economic value, it, value for it. He will see this is unnecessarily occupying space. If I cut it, I can get a lot of firewood from this. 
So he looks at it from that angle, whereas we look at it from a genetic resource point of view. So these interests vary. So there's a conflict of interest. So we need to do a lot of capacity building, which requires participatory processes in management. Communities often to be strengthened for their organizational capacity, made better capable to reclaim responsibilities in management of PGR, identify intrinsic skills in communities. Then development of competence, such as practicals in keeping plant records. We talk of all stakeholders. I'm not talking only our own scientific community. Obtaining training in technical, and we need to kind of extend our hand as an outreach program. Training in mapping their own land races. This is something very important, which I find, because when you go to an unknown area, the local farmer is your guide to take you to the place exactly what you want. Training is a con training in conflict management, resolution of disputes related to PGR management, impart capacity to communities to gain user rights, acquire skills for financial accountability. These are all people, you know, many of them may not be as educated as us breeders, cooperate and develop ways to ensure natural plant resources under their control and management. If you give them empowerment to maintain their, the material, we can be sure that they will definitely give you good genetic resource material or maintaining them in situ. Encourage custodianship. This is a recent development which has been uh, uh, conceived by Biodiversity International for Mango. And uh, this custodianship uh, has really worked very well in maintaining many of the tree species so that better organized outside interest groups will not overpower and take over. So the ability to scrutinize the intentions outside investors and development. This is something very important. These people have to be strengthened for such uh, scrutiny. Reject outside interests if these are not beneficial to the community. We breeders do it. If something is not of, of our interest, if it is not within the objective framework of our breeding program, we don't want that material. So similar knowledge has to be imparted to the other stakeholders. In areas ranging from basic education to reading, many of them are illiterate, they don't know arithmetic, and training in planning of PGR activities, some of the agencies which have thought of, uh, which can be involved in these kind of activities are listed. Then approaches to management need to be based on participation of local communities. Impart capacity building to maintain ecological processes that support conservation of ecosystems mapped with high levels of genetic diversity. I remember Dr. Madhav Gatgi's activity and his entire report was turned down by the government. Approach developmental goals to meet plant genetic resource needs for future generations besides meeting their own needs. Then issues which need to be addressed, I've just listed out, I'm not reading them. It can be just read out by your, uh, on your screens. Awareness among user groups. Then resolving conflicts, very important aspect which we have seen. In many cases, it has happened between breeders and the farmers. Then prioritize for large scale in situ maintenance. This is what I said. When you give custodianship, you can give custodianship for large scale in situ maintenance, promote location specific plant type and associated species. Species level categorization is important as well. We discussed okay. knowledge of good posts or other associated domains. I just brought this into picture when we talk of PGR, especially PGR to product. Post harvest technology definitely helps to identify the product in a very uh, good and formal manner. Then encourage knowledge centers of, for PGR by teaching community. This has been proposed by Dr. M. S. Swaminathan in his own activities, in the tribal activities in Orissa, where he says it's, conservation is a continuous process. And we say conservation continuum should be uh, pursued. Then way forward, identification of genetic resources in species, ancestors. What is it that ancestors can provide us? Research in genetics and breeding, increase availability of poor trade approaches that have been discussed. Promote a system of national prioritization and with different kinds of crops, the networking mode. There's a need for a comprehensive relook or for a deviation from conventional PGR management. Conceive a set of new normal guidelines. Promote national and or collective efforts to conserve the diversity of species which are regional, national, global important. Then promote many of these issues which I have been talking earlier also. Some of these are getting repeated. Then here I would like to focus in safety duplication of exit to conserve genetic resources in a place like Chandra or Svalbard, where we have already 
brand it up with the NDP. They have already taken up this kind of an activity, and uh, utilization of the NDP resources is a very important aspect to develop innovative products and procedures. Product development directly from PGRs is immediately it needs for food, nutrition, and healthcare without depletion of natural reserves. So lack of adequate collection, domestic uh, measures to identify and translate express and express species inherent traits among genetic stocks, lack of studies on trait specific inheritance patterns in PGR of most crops, the requirement for pre breeding, and how to enhance availability. Identification of purectors, identification of characterized geoplasm, use of trade specific pre bred corsets. The other day I was hearing uh, Dr. Tonapi, he said only 3% of our genetic resources are being put to use. How are you going to think of enhancing them? So, coming to almost, I think I'm left in one or two slides, uh, web based permanent, you know, many permanent problem, when I say permanent, a worker in PGR has to work for decades. Like, I worked for 40 years, but if somebody gets a higher position, he leaves the job, he doesn't get publications, he is, he is, he is a very great aspirant in climbing up the ladder, then he will not stick on to PGR work. Strengthening multi location breeding activities involving core sets of PGR, then reviewing policy impact in horticulture. Then on-site constraints have to be thought of. Bureaucratic obstacles for use and distribution of the genetic resources. Dr. Tiku, you may be very well aware of all these things. Yeah. And sharing of responsibilities, the NDPGR is the only nodal agency. Now we need to conceive a natural institute under NARS to coordinate and intensify horticulture PGR management activity. So we need to think of adopt Green Global or Genesis, which uh, earlier IPGR I used to use it, or Bioversity now. So bring a complete set of continuous monitoring and comprehensive monitoring is required and threat, assess threats to target species and establish a system of monitoring genetic diversity on long-term basis. Mm -hmm. So this is the last slide. Uh, exchange of experiences using information technology uh, through capacity and build capacity through organization of joint regional courses and workshops and development of knowledge and expertise to facilitate harmonized genetic resource strategy, policies and legislation, build strong rational participatory programs with all the, uh, the public and private institutions, then promote sharing of PGA. This is very important between public and private institutions with a robust benefit sharing mechanism. Thank you. I think I've exceeded time. Yeah. Nine minutes. Thank you. Thank you. That's Excellent timing also. Thank you. Aparna, you may continue. Aparna, are you there? You can you can stop presenting now so that we can have. Can you stop presenting? Uh, my, my presentation is over. No, you stop. You have to stop presenting. Then the screen will be. Um, yeah. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. I think uh, the participants will appreciate that you covered a lot of ground. A lot of ground. I uh, kind of moderate, and I thought before that uh, we have some questions on the chat box. So, uh, Suresh, are you there? You want to ask directly? Uh, I think. Uh, uh, okay, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, it's really. A knowledgeable and uh, informative presentation uh, to understand the various genetic resources situation in India, the, how it has been conserved and under uh, different management approaches. Uh, I also see a lot of concerns which he felt uh, that uh, he has uh, he has raised uh, mainly in terms of uh, when the genetic resources uh, is shared. What are the you know multilateral agreement systems, uh, especially when it is shared across the international uh, organizations? what sort of a uh, arrangement uh, because it has a lot of implications number one that access benefit sharing when people use the uh, genetic resources so they need to share the the benefit what they gained over the years so otherwise uh, the resource cannot be mobilized to build the future genetic resource conservations so what are the, those uh, dimensions which uh, india has developed the policies across the um, uh, the genetic resources, number one. 
Number two, whether the only the genetic source or the knowledge is also associated while sharing, because sometimes people get the genetic resources, but but they're not knowing what are the knowledge behind the genetic resources, especially medicinal aromatic plants and many other uh, horticultural products. And uh, how about its genetic materials also is shared? Sometimes uh, DNA fingerprinting. They may not know how to protect those uh, genetic resources. Number three, uh, the especially the rehabilitation is also important. When we can uh, take the genetic resources from the villages as a land race, so we improve. And also sometimes we need to rehabilitate to help them show them how it has been improved over years, so that uh, it can be uh, taken uh, long term uh, uh, approaches. Okay, and let us let us, uh, Doctor Ganeshan, did you? Get the question? Yeah, I got the question, but I don't know who the speaker is. <laughs> ah, Dr. L. M. Suresh, can you put on your video? I'm not able to see it. Yeah, I'm able to see you, but... Uh, Suresh, can you put on your video? Yeah, here. Yeah. Yeah. This is Dr. L. M. Suresh. He works for CIMIT in based in Kenya. He is a very reputed pathologist and oh. does a lot of uh, breeding for disease resistance in maize, etc. there. Okay. Yeah. So he's an old colleague and friend. Yeah. He's not old. I am old. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for joining, uh, Dr. Suresh. And uh, although this may not be your direct domain with the present uh, work which you are carrying out, and I really appreciate your concerns with regard to genetic resource management. What I have uh, presented here is a bird's overview or rather a glimpse. I know Dr. Tick will definitely bear with me. Many of the issues which you have asked are still yet to be sorted out. Even I think few a few seminars before Dr. Bansal was here, Dr. Tikku. Yeah, yeah. Then Dr. Kuldeep Singh also was there. Yeah. So when these people were talking, they would have given a much later information about uh, all the policy issues. But I do not know whether they are covered. But when it comes to horticulture, it is always the lame excuse. Many many a times I have seen that you know our breeders. Criticize uh, in horticulture, criticize NBPGR for their untimely or no, no, not providing plasma on time. Yes, you are right. The benefit sharing aspects are required to be worked out. And this we have been putting a lot of emphasis in all our AICRP meets also. Dr. Tiku may be yeah. able to you know, bear, support me or give me a, an additional input if you feel like. But many, many a times I have seen my personal experiences, you know, Ray, what you people are doing horticulture work. It is not kind of, you know, I honestly, I tell you, let me, I don't know whether there are MVPs or scientists in this group. The budget for uh, plant genetic resources, 80% is taken away by field crops. Now what percolates to us is left over. And we have seen this many, many a times. We have made efforts to, in fact, in during my service period, I made an effort to move a National Center for Plant Genetic Resources for Horticulture Cross. This proposal is still lying in ICR, if I am correct, but again run down because they say for the country there should be only one genetic resources uh, unit. But today we have grown beyond. Try to understand we have surpassed field crop production. The number of crops which we have in horticulture is almost or equal or slightly more than field crops. I don't know. What is they, they, they have uh, much higher economic and cash uh, value. Horticulture yeah, crops. Horticulture crops have a lot of cash huge, value. Huge, huge value. Yeah. No, no, I remember very well, uh, Dr. Savant wanted to introduce a lot of grape material from, uh, uh, I think, France or one of these countries. You know, he was completely, you know, being told that, you know, it should not be imported, it's not possible. But then he had to use some of his political channels to get the material because he was facing a lot of pressure from the grape growers in Maharashtra. To be very frank with you, maybe I may be talking a little out of the box, but the situation is not all that uh, rosy for horticulture crops when it comes to the import of germ plus. Yes. And you know, many, many things have come, but they have not reached the concern. And I remember Dr. Savant has told me that you have to go sit in front of the office, sit in ICR, and then get it cleared. And of course, a little bit of political intervention he had to do. 
because the pressure was more on the from the farmer side grape grower side now such a thing could have, can happen to many of these kind of horticultural crops where the growers are a bit ahead of us in getting the material planted in their place anything but else only, uh, there are there are a few questions any any anything else yeah only uh, as you said uh, that uh, when you want to uh, take from the international organization any international organization they always have a uh, kind of a international plant treaty like smt agreement they normally attach to it there should not be any botherations unless india is not part of it uh, treaty sir this material transfer agreement i did it with several countries when i was in service yeah. and through that only we were able to get some material but at some point of time that also did not work out because when the helm of affair people change they have a different thought and these are normally for a restricted period of time and needs to be renewed every year this renewal could not happen and also okay, this mutual mutual uh, if it is not mutual then it kind of stops it cannot be one way yeah, See, that, yeah. That, that 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 is a aspect we have to look at of course there will be ip issues etc but if somebody is giving us something then they will also expect something back from us guru plasm may without that uh, i i i want to give an example that uh, you know if we would not be eating tomato and corn in india if it had not come from south america right and there are so many crops we have also benefited and they should this should be uh, they, they should be worked out of i think it is part of the you, you know that upo meeting etc they have worked out lot of methodologies but how far it is in uh, in the system now i do not know but uh, there are a lot of uh, maybe dr uh, ramnaya can say something he has been involved yeah, in this is our he has information on this yeah it's a uh, uh, the nba rules and uh, activities are coming in a big way to transform the technologies and the germplasm and uh, in the nba uh, they are concerned only with uh, value added products other than the horticultural and uh, crops uh, other uh, yeah. crops and uh, uh -huh. there nobody nobody understands the value of the horticultural crops or the field crops and they don't consider them as a value added products and when you we go there to exchange the germplasm from getting something or uh, even within the university within the india university to private industry private industry university they don't agree it. Uh, i mean that is a very big uh, stumbling block i think as far as i can say okay i think uh, i would sum up that dr ganeshan i think these are areas still needing some kind of brainstorming at a in a you know smaller group to come up with suggestions and now that we have an agriculture minister from karnataka i think <laughs> you, you can you can try and get something energized there in bangalore and then take it to the higher authorities because we cannot solve it here we can at least bring the points to the fore i think there are a couple of uh, more questions dr ganeshan aparna we have time yes aparna? sir we, uh, we do have time yeah, okay. we can take okay. questions so i think there are interesting questions one is mr bala saab barpe can government institutions interested to work with private sector uh, meaning exchange of germ plasm what would you say dr ganeshan government institutions working with private with sector private sector, sector. I think this is already happening, no? I think it is happening. It is happening actually. This uh, ACRP I have seen private sector involvement, but yes, I don't yes. know to what extent you people think of uh, using the germplasm, which is see at least I'll tell you in Australia and all, the government sector works with germplasm, the private sector works to produce varieties. Yes. The kind correct me if I am wrong. Yes. In India, everybody wants to work on everything. Like you know, private sector wants to develop varieties. Private sector wants to develop R and D. We do open R and D, government clearance. And in government sector, the germplasm is held by uh, the government sector. Not uh, in in terms of sharing. That proper M O U doesn't exist, and it's a long, long process to share the material. On the other hand, whatever material private sector brings into the government, that needs to be shared with the government, but not vice versa. these are some of the gray areas which we we need to sort it out another gray area that needs to have both ways i agree I mean, like 
Uh, and you know, recently they also told that material coming into the country in the form of imports, plants are being imported directly for cultivation. A set of them should be deposited to a uh, public sector institute. This started uh, during Dr. Krishna Kumar's video. No, no, but they are, they are, they are going to, I mean, there is a problem there. I'll, I'll tell you my personal ex example. Uh, Cornell University does field day every day, every year. I have attended many of those field days. They don't send uh, uh, the, the seeds to NBPG, through NBPJ. They go direct. We are unable to get the material because uh, they don't. Uh, they say we, we we are having SMTA with you as an institute, as a company, but not with NBPJ. So I think NBPJ, yeah, yes, they sir. need to they need to have some may out of this. Otherwise. Uh, a lot of good material cannot come, or it will come, you know, uh, the, uh, in, uh, in the old breeder space, you know. So, so the, there, there are issues, Mr. Varpe. I mean, there are issues, but there are some projects already going on between private and government sector. Another uh, Uttarakhand no. traders. Oh, sorry, Dr. Ramnaya. Yes, please. Yeah, it's a uh, the foreign uh, universities and institutions. Uh, why they don't send it through NPR is the cause of the NPR constitution, where NPJ, NPR constitution says whatever the material comes to them is uh, open source to all. So the foreign institutions they feel that they are losing IP without having any agreement with any other third party, third in, uh, institution, fourth mm -hmm. institution. That NBPGR could not, uh, it can't, it is not easy to rectify because it has to go to the parliament and get rectified. I mean, that's a big uh, issue. It's a, it's, a, it's a very big issue because, you know, uh, getting uh, inbreds that may have taken uh, millions of dollars to develop and then it comes to NBPGR and it becomes a national resource, it's, it wouldn't be possible. It's like, uh, it's like uh, IHR sending one of their parents to Suppose under an MTA to a company in say USA under an MTA, and then US germplasm says this is a national resource; it can go to anybody. So there has to be some uh, meeting ground on this, and I think we can't solve it here. But I think we can only flag this as an issue or future, uh, you know, discussion at the appropriate forum. I see. And then then there is one Sorry. I see Dr. Karyalu, former director of NBPGR. Yes. Maybe he may have a few words. Dr. Karyalu, please, please. Thank you very much. Welcome. Uh, thank welcome, you very welcome. much. Thanks, thanks for uh, coming uh, in. Uh, uh, first of all, I must congratulate uh, Dr. Ganeshan for, for tackling a very, very broad topic uh, and in such an elaborate manner. Uh, I would I would say the horticultural crops uh, 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 by way of uh, their uh, life cycle and reproductive mechanisms, I see encompass a tremendously wide variety of, uh, of forms, of life forms, that no uh, crop plant other than horticultural plants, a group of crop plants can, can match. And in that respect, uh, the problems with horticultural crops and that need to be solved uh, from a scientific uh, point of view or from a policy point of view are tremendous, uh, are very great and some of which uh, we have been able to resolve, some of which we have not been able to resolve. There has been, uh, as far as the policy issues are concerned, I am not aware of the most recent developments at NBPGR, but uh, sincere and efforts have been made to facilitate sharing of germplasm. A committee under uh, Dr. Aris Paroda uh, was constituted and it has been liberalized to, to a great extent. Already there is a list under the, under the FAO, there is a list of 60 crops that can be, that can be exchanged, uh, uh, that India is also exchanging, that is committed to exchange. I don't know how many horticultural crops are involved in this. For others also, uh, efforts have been made and, and I remember policy decisions have been taken that these, uh, uh, these also, the, uh, the exchange also needs to be pressurized. I am, uh, uh, I very much appreciate uh, 
uh, the concern of uh, uh, suppliers of germplasm that their germplasm should uh, reach the intended uh, person or the intended institute and no other institute and which as you say uh, that they, uh, that NBPGR says uh, that no it is a national asset and has to be distributed everywhere but again I think we need uh, at every level we need to pursue things over and over again there are there are people who uh, uh, you see these these decisions have to be taken not only at the scientist level but the policy makers level also exactly. policy makers have so many considerations exactly. where you see you were just talking about the political in uh, for yeah. the import of uh, uh, for the import of uh, we, uh, what was that grape germplasm there was yeah. there was some political issue so there are yeah. so so many complex issues involved in, in that uh, all of us if we make a joint effort together I think things uh, can look up, things can improve. I was wondering, you know, besides the, from a scientific point of view, do we have, I am not aware, always, uh, perhaps we may have, but I am not aware, do we have a national program on, we are talking of uh, right now diversity, for example, uh, how, do we have national programs on diversity of indigenous, of main indigenous horticultural, horticultural crops of the country. For example, banana. Do we have a national program on diversity and genome of, of banana, a, a national uh, genome program? A genome program would also mean uh, the, uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the genetic diversity, molecular diversity, uh, then other forms of uh, morphological diversity of mango do we have such a program with us why don't we have who is going to have this program and who is going to champion this program and we uh, may do it by fits and starts but it is the yes. issue that, is, uh, uh, that has to do it i okay. find such programs being run by dbt and and being in those committees i feel sorry that why doesn't the, any of the ICR institutes come, uh, uh, ICR institute become a major player in that? In some there are, but in some there are not. But as a funding agency, does ICR or a, or a related agricultural uh, uh, organization have that much commitment? I don't know. I don't know because uh, I find many of these programs are funded uh, funded by DBT, not by ICR or. Are so, so such problems are there. Such uh, within the system, such such problems uh, are there. I would also you. like to have indig uh, uh, these uh, uh, indigenous programs on indigenous green leafy vegetables. We we talk of nutritional amelioration. Uh, why are we we stuck with only some of the as Surin was saying some of the exotic vegetables yeah. only. What about indigenous vegetables yeah. uh, like brassicas, chinopods, amaranths, uh, porculaca? Yeah. Is there a, any such programs in any horticultural institute uh, directed towards towards the... So a number of, quite a number of issues are there and which we need to resolve at the institute's level, at the horticulture institute's level, at the ICR level, as also at the policy level of Thanks. the government. Thanks, Thank thanks for your comments, uh, Dr. Daniel. Connection, quick Garek. response, and then we have a couple of questions. I'll finish now very quickly. You know, Rukariyala, just to update you, many of the scientists from institutions in horticulture have sent projects to ICR for support, uh, and even NBPGR also for support. Thankfully, NBPGR has supported the agrobiodiversity project in horticultural crops during my period over the last two, three years before I retired. Subsequently, what happened, there was a budget crunch and all horticultural crops budget was with it. There was no money given. Two years, we successfully completed this agrobiodiversity project across about uh, 15 to 20 institutions where material was shared by NPPGR for evaluation and characterization. We were really doing very good work. I was the coordinator. I was monitoring all these activities at various centers. 
And one fine morning, after, of course, by the time I superannuated, then suddenly they said, uh, Doctor, who was that? Doctor Tyagi. He said, budget crunch, so we are deleting horticulture. So what happens under such a situation? Institute says we don't have money, and PGR mandate is NBPGR. As far as IHR is concerned, so we have to look for institutions like biotechnology. Okay. And you know they were kind enough to support a lot of activities. We IHR should be thankful to them, rather than telling that you know why they are going there. On one side, you are right, sir. We need to think of widening our own uh, budget uh, provisions. Or think of allowing organizations like DB to support research activities. Banana uh, uh, work is being done, uh, and man yes, work is being initiated. Just, just for clarification, Ganeshan, I don't say why why uh, DBT is doing it. In fact, I am in those DBT committees, and I I, I know uh, that these are being done. What what I mean to say why ICR doesn't do it? <laughs> That's what I said. Budget priority. Okay. There's no budget. That's what he's saying. The budget was stopped after two years. So suddenly they say there is no priority. I mean, I mean, uh, this is this is, again, this is this is a policy issue that you know we can only flag somewhere. The director uh, IHR probably has to take it. At the appropriate yeah, you yeah. do the minimal work. Yeah. No uh, money. I, no. I, I think we have time for about a, one more uh, question, uh, Ganesh. Uh, no, no problem. Uttaranchal traders, I mean, they are here and they have said, please help us in Uttarakhand where me and similar people like me want to explore organic farming, farming in larger scale. But unfortunately, we don't get any info as well as scientific support, which can authenticate the various application and use of our well-known crops and species plus herbs. Uh, if, if uh, I don't know who is... Who is the person? He Uttaranchal traders. If he wants to quickly say something, um, yeah, I will. I will. Uh, I will tell tell them, yeah. advise them that if they have a bouquet of crops or bouquet of species or bouquet of uh, valuable plant material, yeah. in the first they should take up some on-farm conservation. They yeah. should delineate some of these material and grow them in locations where they are growing very well. Continue to enrich the gene pool of that particular location. That is number one. So that they get a number of uh, the, their harvest will be bountiful. They can share some and uh, you know commercialize some and then perpetuate some for their growth. Uh, because I'm talking, Uttaranchal is mostly temperate crops. If I'm right, are they speaking any particular crop? No, he doesn't mention anything. But uh, maybe uh, I request him to, you know, write yeah, a mail to you, mail to you, and he can get some more information. We can discuss. Our Brahm Singh has done a wonderful job in uh, uh, that Tibet area, no? Brahm Singh. Uh, yeah, yeah. Dr. Ganeshan, thank you very much. Uh, I'm sorry. Um, uh, thanks to uh, uh, Dr. Tiku, uh, Dr. Ganeshan. My only submission is that my name is Inder Negi, and I basically represent Uttarantu Trader. Unfortunate, I could not go through that. Because there is some linking problem in my laptop and as well as the phone. So, why is this breaking? Reduce your volume? Yeah, is it okay now with you? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. My, my thing. A lot of echo, echo is coming. Yes. Uh, give me a second. Give me a second. Now it is okay? Yeah. Uh, thank you very much to both of you, uh, Dr. Tiku and Dr. Ganeshan. Submission is that there are a couple of things what we are doing in uh, Uttarakhand. And rightly, as I put up a question, is that a lot of things which is happening. I'm talking about there are a lot of crops, tropical crops. I'm talking about madhwa, jhumra, natal, uh, wild uh, planting trees like natal tree, what we call it, uh, kandalis, and all that. And there are a couple of things which can be used, a lot of things in a commercial way. And small, small people like me, who is just as a budding over here in Uttarakhand. They are doing it commercially and they are supporting a lot of women welfare associations, things and all that. But unfortunately, in terms of the government support and all, there are a lot of things which is lacking. One is that uh, there is no such communication either from the government and as well as with any other stakeholders of the government or any of the uh, channel, I'll say, or maybe because of that some intra-connection or interconnection lacking is over there, which I ex uh, accepted. And uh, rightly, I have gone through a lot of uh, blogs of uh, Dr. Tiku's uh, with the help of uh, uh, Aparna Ma'am. I've gone through them. I find that uh, he has 
up he has written a lot of things and as well as you dr ganesh lot of things about you know for the genome things how it can be commercially used and how it can lift up our uh, uh, society and as well as the arm person you know unfortunate is that the, the political people the uh, intellectual people they don't they don't percolate their particular things to the ground loop maybe there is some they have they might have their strengths they might have their constraints uh, they rightly you people said there are budgeting things lot of things priorities are there but what my submission to you as really it was a small question but it came to a representative of part why can't people like you sir come up have up uh, some sort of things because when you get retired and all that you have that inter- intellectual thing that yeah, that brain uh, the, the things which you gained in so many years has to come up to people like us in a ground root and uh, let me tell you sir if you need uh, an invitation from any other part from a social things and all that please i love to invite you guys to have some uh, things and educate our farmers they can do wonders sir and uttarakhand any himachal pradesh these are small small states and they can they can if they look into our aromatic plant a uh, medicinal plant or spice uh, i'm talking about the spices and all that they can do wonders and they can lift up that particular economy of that particular thing dependability on centers dependability on anything thing can be waved off and in internationally it can be well established sir my only mm-hmm. submission thank to you people thank to god that you people are uh, genius and you are there with us and we are having a chance to interact with you guys with you people please sir and help us to thank you so thanks so that we can thank you for your uh, inputs i think it it requires uh, more debate and you know trying to make an action plan i think later on please keep in touch with dr aparna tiwari maybe we will have some day some interactive session on how to you know take this forward ganeshan you want to say something otherwise i want no, to, I want to connect him to one dr raina hmm. who is a well known uh, i think is a retired person now he is into all this organic farming and medicinal crop and medicinal herbs i think he is based at delhi or uh, he was in himachal oh. pradesh you are talking to ravind you are talking to ravinder raina ravinder raina yeah Ah, know, yeah, he 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 is in uh, Amity University. He is in Delhi. Amity, Amity. Yes. Now yeah. he is moved over to Amity. Yeah. He is yeah. one man who can certainly he knows that location very well. Yeah. He has been a part of our many of our ACRPs in medicinal crops. So he will be able to help you. We will and, be. We will be. Uh, I will connect him to uh, no, Dr. Rena. I know him personally. So yeah. he is also from the same botany. you know we are alumni yeah. at the kashmir university botany department so i will connect you please write to me uh, or you know uh, write to dr aparna and i will if you have her email sure sir, sure i'll do that sir i'll do that thank you so i will i think thank you very much it has been a pleasure listening to you dr ganesh i can thank call you, you ganesh thank you oh, <laughs> so, no problem it, it has been a pleasure very very comprehensive you know One, uh, i have I am seeing Dr. Bhatak. Okay, I Dr. see him. Bhatak. I wanted I to thank Dr. Bhatak is there. Yeah, Dr. I think uh, is there. Dr. Ramana is there. Really, Dr. Karel is really, there. There are a lot really, of people whom really, I know for ages, and I thank them for having come here. Dr. Bhatak, you want to say one bite? Yeah, I want to say I want to congratulate uh, you people for taking such an important issue, and this is not only for India. This is for the whole globe where we are. we are damaging most of the germ i i i came to know that we are uh, eliminating lot of species uh, from the growth yeah. every day yeah, yeah. so now yeah. it is a high time that we should respect these all uh, all animals as well as plants as a as because they are the, they are the uh, institution i call them institution because of we mankind is surviving Yeah, yeah. Normally we call our we, our self to be deciding factor, but no, they are the deciding factor. So I am very happy to have this kind of debate. Uh, Tiku Sahab and Ganeshan Ji and Aparna, I think uh, it's very in the right direction where we where we are going. Uh, let us have uh, respect to our uh, jambla, jambla, and all whether we are using or not. Thank you for this. Yeah. Thank okay. you. And uh, any any quick bite, Dr. Karakwal. No. One last thing I would like okay. to share. Let me, let me, let me. Yeah. Dr. Patak, 
I remember Dr. Bhattak had kept some germplasm in an exhibition. And that was our Uttarakhand cool. fellows, I would like to just tell them that their main concern was about organic farming. Yeah. So, I remember Dr. Bhattak was literally, you know, shocked that this onion germplasm was stolen. Yeah. So he went to the, I think you went or you went to the nearby police station to complain. <laughs> Ocean awareness about geoplasm. I'm just bringing it as an example. Dr. Kharakwal was saying something and then we will conclude. Dr. Kharakwal, you said something? Hello? Dr. Kharakwal. You were saying something. You were saying something. Hello? He so has freeze, freeze over here. I think that worked. Uh, anyway. I think thank you, Dr. Ganeshan. I mean, Ganeshan, it was really thank nice. You. Thank you, Ganeshan. You covered so many. I don't. I think it will take me ten minutes to cover. So I'll just say that you know, not only did you talk about the number of species that are available and we need to utilize them better. That is that is something that we need to do. We need to preserve them better. And trade specific germplasm exploration needs to be done. Uh, leafy vegetables is a very good example, and all the uh, fruit crops, etc. You mentioned. And then that area will remain gray area. The acknowledgement by the breeders on utilization of germplasm from the private sector as well as public sector, when they use must happen more openly. I think I agree with you, although I come from private sector now, but I agree there needs to be something there. And then uh, introduction of these extent varieties, that was another important point, which are outside but we are not able to even get that because of the policy issues. And then pre-breeding, not happening adequately. I think this is an area that I, I remember in New Zealand, a $20 million project over 20 years, they were able to make Royal Gala from Gala. Yes. So th those kinds of breeding projects need to happen in our, in our crops, uh, you know, on, on fruit breeding. And in that, I just want to add that now in hazelnuts, they were able to get seed to seed in one year through the speed breeding technique that Lee Hickey from Queensland University and John Hopkins University in uh, uh, you know London, I mean UK. They have come out with a lot of uh, speed breeding where we can do seed to seed in a very, very short time. In wheat, they are taking six generations a year. So I think we need to use this into our pre-breeding techniques uh, for fruit crops. Uh, then. Of course, conservation methodologies, etc. You, I think, pandemic. I would conclude it. The pandemic has taught us that we need to go beyond our, uh, you know, thirty crops that we use for our food. Yes. You know, uh, we need to go beyond, beyond, and beyond. And we have the natural resources. And there is high time now. Uh, there is uh, policy intervention, and there is budget given for this, so that we can create new food crops into our system. And I think uh, conserving uh, the germplasm, of course, is the other way. And thank you very much. I think that was a very nice um, presentation and congratulations to you. Aparna, your last comments. And so thank you for being here. Sure. I thank you, everybody. Do you want to say something <laughs> about the next one? Yeah, sir. Before we close the session, I think you should uh, let participants know who is our next speaker. Yeah. Oh, I have, okay. I, I, I am glad to uh, announce that uh, the next speaker is Dr. J. L. Karelu. I thank him for having been present today. He will be speaking on uh, the importance of eggplants. I feel it's one of those neglected crops in our germplasm. And he will speak on the science behind it, this nutrition behind eggplants. It is not begun, it is gunwala. <laughs> Bangan. Bogan. It is Bogan. Uh, look forward to his presentation uh, in August, in one month from now. Thank you very much for participating in this and nice discussion we had. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you, Ganeshan. Thank you, Ganeshan. Thank you. Thank you, Ganeshan. Thank you. Thank you.